my YouTube peoples. Um, I just opened my Bible. Random open. I like playing a little Bible roulette. Malachi chapter 4. Again, random open here. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven. And all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Well, that's certainly interesting. Do you notice that I'm in a far better mood than I was yesterday? Um, I don't know what I have to share with you, but if you keep listening, you'll hear it. I recently started um, participating in a Bible study with my next door neighbor. I said in my last video that God has been just talking to me about the simple things and you know when I've been disappointed in this, this last month or two I've really done the introvert kind of thing I've kind of turned inward towards myself and focused on me 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 and what does Andy want what does Andy want to do what makes Andy happy and uh, you know just pursuing things that were selfish things that were um, you know, they, they may seem like fun hobbies, but considering the times that we're living in, uh, I was burning up vital time that I could be using to make videos, you know, to encourage the brethren to um, pray, read my Bible, uh, serve others in whatever way. Uh, so again, I started going to my neighbor's, uh, well, a Bible study with my neighbor, and God has been talking to me about the simple things. Love your neighbor as yourself, and love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, body, etc., etc. With those, you will uh, fulfill the law. Let me read something to you here, and pardon me while I look this up, but I'll make it brief. Type, 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 type. Here it comes. Hold your horses. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> you guys like the, the jokes and the smiles? Make you feel better? Okay. Luke 10, 25 and ongoing. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Luke 10, 26, he said to them, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? That's what Jesus said to the lawyer. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Now here's the key part. And Jesus said, And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. So there's a lot of people that are teaching things like you got to keep Jewish dietary laws, you got to keep the Sabbath, you got to keep, uh, you know, you got to call God by a certain name, you know, whether it's, and it, you know, I don't mean this in a mocking tone, but some people are like, so I think some people just slap some stuff together and say, well, if you don't call him Yahweh, she, Wah, he, Wah, Wah, then you're not saved. You know what? I've seen people spell it 30 different ways, call him 30 different names, but you know what? I got saved without knowing a word of Hebrew. I might have known Shalom, maybe, but you know, I got saved in the name of Jesus Christ. I have done what Mark 15 through 18 says believers shall let, you know, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Believers 
You know, these signs will follow those who believe. They will cast out devils. I've done that in the name of Jesus Christ. I've seen people set free. I've seen people healed right in front of my eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. So it's not about all this, you got to call God by some special name because then you are trying to set yourself into some little special club saying, oh, well, if I call God by this special name and I keep a bunch of Old Testament stuff, that, you know, that's what saves me. Let me find another verse for you. Oh boy, where'd it go? Patience, grasshopper. Well, this isn't going how I wanted. Romans 3.20 Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans 3.28 Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. So it's not about keeping dietary laws. It's not about knowing some special name to put you in some elite club that sets you apart from everybody else. Jesus died for the whole world. Um, I got another nice verse for you here. There's no reason in talking to you unless I got some scripture. 1 John 2.2 2, And he himself is the propiti prop oh my goodness. propitiation for our sins, and not ours only, but also for the whole world. So, oh, and the verse, let me read you the verse prior, just because I can. 1 John 2, one. My little children, these things I write to you that you may not sin. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So that's kind of like two of the Trinity in one verse there. An advocate with the... Oh, sorry. I need to reread that. We have an ad, advocate with the Father, who is Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, not ours only, but for the whole world. Jesus Christ died for the whole world. Doesn't say that... Oh, and by the way, if you don't call him Yahweh, he wah, ha, wah, <clears throat> you know, and I don't mean this to be mocking. I'm just saying that there are 38 different ways for people to spell this. I've heard it said a bunch of different ways. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, you can't tell me that Jesus isn't his name because I know him. I talk to him. He talks to me. Okay? So, you know, I don't mean to tirade about this, but that's just what has come up. Um, let me tell you some other bodacious stuff. Um, I've had on my heart for a long time to do a video about one thing, and uh, I want to you know, save that video to do, you know, kind of a focused study on it. But, um, you know, there's a verse that says, we'll tread on serpents and scorpions and all the evil work of the devil and nothing will by any means harm you. Um, what I, what I want to do a video on is that what you believe in your heart and what you speak is what you get. You know, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, there's also concepts, and I think it comes out of James 2, you know, where it talks about the tongue is a small member, but, you know, it has the ability to direct your whole life. You know, it's like the rudder on a ship where just a small rudder directs the whole ship. So what you speak and what you believe is where your life's going to go. If you speak a bunch of negativity over yourself, you're going to get those things. You know, if you have, say, I'm just going to use some examples here. If you have, say, a history of cancer in your family, like I do. You know, there's a history of cancer in my family. If you continue to say, 
oh, well, everybody else in my family has had cancer. I'm going to get cancer too. You are putting a giant, like, vacancy sign, like you're a hotel. You're putting a, a giant vacancy sign for a spirit of cancer. You're saying, well, I'm going to have cancer. And the devil's like, yeah, you are going to have cancer, and then he's going to come in. You know? But if you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm not going to have cancer, then what you believe in your heart and what you speak is what you're going to get. Let me give you some examples. Um, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, uh, I drank the heck out of some milk. You know, I'm six foot seven right now uh, and hoping to put on a few more. Yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Um, anyway, I used to drink like just tons of milk. It got to be so much that I wouldn't even put it in a cup anymore, and I would just drink it straight out of the jug. You know, I'd look around the corner, see if anybody's looking, and just drink it straight out of the jug. I'm sorry. Some people might be grossed out by that. I was like a maniac for some calcium, you know? I was like rabid. <laughs> okay, so when I was, uh, I don't know, 14, 15, 16, somewhere around there, I started getting sick in the mornings, you know, before going to school, like where I was throwing up and stuff. Well, I ended up going to the hospital, or not the hospital, but just to the doctor for a checkup. And that doctor tried to put, th this is really going to speak to a lot of you because a lot of you need to take this in and take this to heart and really study on this. But this doctor said to me, oh, well, you're lactose intolerant. You know, and I was drinking milk, I was eating cheese, I was, you know, I was a big fan of dairy, right? So this doctor said to me, well, you're lactose intolerant, you know, you gotta, you gotta stop drinking all that milk and do all this stuff. And I totally rejected that. I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not lactose intolerant. I'm not gonna be lactose intolerant. You know, so that was, uh... Oh my gosh, a little less than 20 years ago? Hold on a second. Chug, chug. Okay. Doctor told me I was lactose intolerant. Do I look lactose intolerant to you? Don't accept these word curses that doctors try to put on you, that people try to put on you, that you try to put on you. What you speak and what you believe is what you get. Okay? Here's another one for you. Um, like I said, I've been going to Bible study with my next door neighbor. And um, this girl had a really uh, rough childhood. You know, grew up kind of uh, abused and rejected and all this kind of stuff. So instead of me doing the old selfish Andy thing, uh, I've been loving my neighbor as myself. And I've been giving up all kinds of time to just minister to this girl, talk to her, pray for her, um, you know, talk to her kids. And, uh, you know, because of that, sorry, I'm kind of jumping around here. Oh, uh, this last week, <clears throat> her kids have had strep throat. And when I was younger, I had strep throat probably six or seven times in two or three years, so much to the point where I became allergic to uh, penicillin. <clears throat> so I've had a lot of experience with strep throat. So um, these two kids, they had strep throat. Well, I prayed for them, and, uh, you know, they started improving. Uh, haven't seen them, you know, they weren't, like, healed on the spot, but, you know, they began to uh, heal up and everything. Well, my neighbor, her mom... She got the strep throat, you know, started having headaches and coughs and all that. 
And then I saw the neighbor. She started getting strep throat. Well, you know, I'd spent hours talking to these guys, um, you know, been in the house, been, you know, uh, I don't know, touch things, touch doorknobs, touch whatever, you know. You would think that I would have this thing, right? And I think it was Sunday night. I woke up at probably 2 something in the morning and I felt that thing in my throat. I felt that uh, I felt that itch and that want that that desire to cough and I was like, "Oh no, you don't, devil." And this is what I'd been telling them because I I prayed for healing. Uh, this neighbor girl, she uh, hurt her ankle or her toe in some way and she was limping well I prayed for her and her mom and everything and I haven't seen her limp since you know in the name of Jesus Christ I command pain you come out now in Jesus name you know and I believe what I say right now I still I, I still need to grow more in that and believe for bigger things but here's what happened you know two in the morning I wake up and I feel that itch I feel that tickle that, that wanting to cough. And I was like, oh no, you don't devil. You're not sticking to me. Strep in the name of Jesus Christ. Every symptom, every, you know, itchy throat, cough, you know, congestion, whatever you are, you do not stick to me in the name of Jesus. You go now in Jesus' name. And again in the morning, it tried to, you know, try to, you know, if it can't come in through a window, it's going to check another window. Or it's going to check the back door, you know, check this, check that. Well, it tried to come on me again. I said, no, devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, strep, you do not stick to me. Uh, all these symptoms you will leave now in Jesus' name. And I've spent hours talking to the neighbor, talking to the kids, you know, the mom, hanging out for hours with four people with strep. I don't have it. What you speak and what you believe is what you get. Okay? What other... Um, you need to apply this to your life. When... Um, thinking, thinking, processing. Okay? Um, you know, my, my marriage, uh, most of you should be aware, uh, you know, I did videos last year. I, I got divorced last year because she cheated on me. Well, a lot of her trouble was that she would never take any steps to grow spiritually. And I'm not here to slander her. I'm only using her as an example. She wouldn't take any steps to, to grow spiritually. You know, if she had an issue, instead of dealing with it, she would run from it. And I talk to her about this stuff, you know, about what you speak is what you get. You know, because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, uh, there's another verse that says, God speaks the things that are not as if they are. So when you speak in faith, you are speaking things into existence, as long as it's within the will of God. You know, if you say, well, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to have a million bucks and uh, 85 women up in my bedroom. And, you know, no, it's not the will of God. You know, that's lust of the flesh, lust of the whatever, right? That's funny when I said that. First John 2.17, and the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Ha <laughs> ha, how on time is that? Um, wow. 1 John 2.16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. <laughs> that totally confirms what I just said. Was I reading this subconsciously or something? So, when you speak, when you speak faith, um, if it's in accordance with God's will, study Mark 11, 22 through 24 You know, it talks about um, if you, what, whatever you pray, if you do not doubt in your heart, you'll have these things. Or whatever you pray, believe that you receive it, and you'll have whatever you pray for. You know, that's what the Bible says. That's a fact. You know, that, 
if you believe that and you walk in that, that should be real in your life. But the point I was getting to is that if you speak a bunch of negativity over yourself, like if you say, oh, I'm stupid and I'm, I'm going to get sick and uh, I'm ugly and nobody likes me and uh, my life sucks. And if you just constantly speak this negativity over yourself and you believe it in your heart, you are perpetuating that garbage life. But if you say what the Bible says, and you say that I am blessed with every spiritual blessing, you know, I am saved because of my faith in Jesus Christ. I am healed because the Bible says that I'm healed. I am loved because the Bible says that I'm loved. I am forgiven because the Bible says that I'm forgiven. You know, I... Uh, God will supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. That's Philippians 4.19. You know, when you take these things and you believe them in your heart and you speak them with your mouth, they become reality. As long as it's according to God's will. Okay? So, I would like to do probably a more in-depth video on this. But this is something that's really been on my heart lately. And it's something that the church has to get a hold of because I see it again and again and again believers speaking death and destruction over themselves life and death is in the power of the tongue there's more to that verse uh, there's it's something like you know the fruit of the mouth uh, I need to I need to read it to you directly Okay, here we go. All right, here it comes. I'll start in Proverbs 18:20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Okay, how do you get fruit of your mouth? What you speak produces fruit. It can be positive fruit. It can be negative fruit. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you say, oh, my whole family died of cancer, they had heart attacks and heart problems and depression, and I'm going to get that too. You are speaking death over yourself, and you will receive the fruit of that, of what you speak. If you say, you know what, I'm going to have good health, uh, the works of the devil, sickness, disease, it's not going to stick to me, you know, because I'm blessed, because Jesus loves me, and because um, the power of Jesus is mightier than what the devil's trying to do to kill me. So, that goes back to that other verse, you know. I shall tread on serpents and scorpions and all the evil work of the devil, and nothing shall by any means harm me. You know, so that applies to a lot of things. That can apply to, uh, you know, Obama trying to chemtrail you to death or put fluoride in your water or, you know, try to kill you with Monsanto genetically modified food. You know, all that stuff. You have authority in the name of Jesus Christ. So what you speak and what you believe in accordance with God's will is what you're going to get. So I feel like the Lord just told me to pray for you. So that's what I'm going to do. Every one of you, every single one of you that prayed for me yesterday, now, you are going to receive, you're going to reap what you have sown. Okay? So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for great blessings and peace upon every viewer right now in Jesus' name. I pray health and uh, provision and 
godliness and repentance and conviction and uh, spiritual blessings for clarity, hearing the voice of God, for um, wisdom, for strength, for patience, for long-suffering, for wisdom, open the eyes of their understanding. I pray all these things upon every person viewing this video. I thank you, Lord, for giving this to them. I thank you in advance, Lord, for pouring out your blessings upon your people. Your people need to be revitalized. And I am just now remembering the verse that I started this with. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak victory in your life. You will have victory over every stronghold. You start speaking to this mountain. You tell this mountain, in the name of Jesus Christ, be removed now. Whatever mountain is in your life, whether it's illness, depression, mental torment, can't sleep, uh, curses on your finances, can't find a job, Whatever it is, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every devil that's coming against you, I bind you, I cancel every assignment. This person that is viewing this will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ because this Bible says so. And Jesus is greater than the devil. So right now I speak life to you and you will reap the fruit of my mouth because I believe what I'm speaking. Be blessed right now in Jesus' name and receive peace and joy and strength and renewal right now in Jesus name be up, be uplifted be encouraged be edified because Jesus Christ loves you when I was failing and walking in rebellion and walking in um, selfishness Jesus spoke to my heart and said turn away from this thing serve me he's saying that same thing to you turn away from these worthless idols you know where your treasure is there your heart will be also do not store up treasure on earth where moth and rust uh, corrupt and destroy but store up treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy because where your treasure is there your heart will be so I'm working on that myself, but that's a word for you also. So, maybe running long, but I feel like this is an encouraging video, and somebody's getting ready to get up and do a little dance. There's more to that song, but I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. Oh, here's a wonderful one. You know what? <laughs> you know what? Oh, yesterday I felt like junk, but now I feel great. Where'd it go? Then those who feared the Lord. Okay, this is Malachi again, chapter 3, verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, like I'm speaking to you. And the Lord listened and heard them, so a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on His name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall, gain, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between one who serves God and one who does not serve Him. To me... This is just my opinion, my understanding of it. I believe this is talking about the rapture because they shall be mine on the day that I make them my jewels. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. And then you will be able to discern between the righteous and the wicked. Because God's going to take his children. 
He's going to take those who are serving Him, who are committed, who love the Lord, and are walking after Him. Not those who say, I'm a Christian, yet, you know, you judge a tree by its fruit. They can say they're a Christian, but, you know, are they living in adultery, in lying, in thieving, in fornication, in drug abuse, alcohol abuse? All these things are things that will lead you to hell. So, if these are things that are plaguing your life, be free in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind all that stuff now. Be free. Give it to the Lord. Say, Jesus, I can't get rid of this myself. I give it to you. Take it from me. Okay? So, I don't care if this is long. This is good. But, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I got, um, like, I'm going to get six hours of sleep. But, it's worth it. So, God bless all of you. And, uh, I just hope you're encouraged because uh, I am and I know it's because of all those that prayed for me and I thank you. So I pray that you also received um, great blessings and peace from me praying for you because I'm doing unto you as I would want you to do unto me. So, hey! Hey! Did you hear her belly aching? Bali, come here. And with that, we bid you adieu.